before we go one more step, uh, I'd like to meet the hookers in the front row. <laughs> I am very proud to be a Guinness World Record holder. I'm 87 years old. I am the oldest performing drag queen in the entire world. Working, performing. My name is Walter Cole, and my stage name is Darcel 15. I'm a female impersonator entertainer in Portland, Oregon. Now. Not so bad for 87. Darcel is a character that I've developed over 50 years. Over glamorized, too big a hairdo, too much jewelry, gaudy dresses, and a wicked tongue. George and Martha. 95, 96 years old, living home, a little bit hard of hearing, gonna mess around. Martha, George, be really careful, George, I got a cute angina. That's good, Martha, cause your tits are ugly. <laughs> I've been doing drag since 1967. That's Garcelle, 15 and company. There's a smile on my face for the whole human race. Look at those legs, and they go all the way up. Look at that. In, in heels. What is drag? That's a beautiful question. Drag literally means it's not what you wear normally, like everyday wear. It's totally different. And we have not ladies' makeup, but theatrical makeup. It takes a lot of money, a lot of balls, and a lot of time to become Darcel. I'm ready for my close-up. <laughs> my name is Darcel 15. <laughs> Hair by Viagra. <laughs> How about the guy who takes Prozac and Viagra? <laughs> One happy f***er. <laughs> now, there's a warning label on Viagra. If ha ha have an erection, for four hours or longer, call your doctor. Bullshit. <laughs> I call my friends from Potluck, come on by. <laughs> I'm gonna bring a salad. Hello? Of what? Oh no, we're fine, hun. We're fine. Thank you. Thank you. My household uh, it qualifies for a 30-day trial of hearing aids. Whoa. Oh, that's because they found out that somebody here is 87. Yeah. And right away, they must not be able to hear. Yeah. I know, I get those calls now. Huh? Well, I, yeah, <laughs> how about, how about getting, how about getting uh, letters from cre cremation or Rose City cremation? <laughs> A little card. No, oh, thank you. I think about Darcel 15 Showplace all the time. I bought a bar in Skid Row and created a showplace. We're getting people from all over the world. They come to Portland for vacation, they go to Voodoo Donuts, and they come to Darcel's. And, and it's, it's rewarding and great. People accept more now. When I was growing up, I was shy. I sat in the back of the room in class. I wouldn't answer any questions, raise my hand even if I knew the answer. It was like they called me sissy boy. My father was an alcoholic. My mother died when I was very, very young. The only person that really molded my life was my Aunt Lil. I married my school sweetheart, fell in love, and I, we were married in May, and by September, I was in boot camp in the Army. But when I came back from the military, we had our first child, a, a boy, daughter two years later. And 
I wanted to work for myself. So I looked in the Oregonian and found a coffee house for sale. I had the f first espresso machine north of San Francisco. And the same time I had the cafe, I opened an after hours jazz joint and also an ice cream parlor all downtown. And then they took all three of my businesses away by urban renewal. But each time they did it, they gave me $5,000. So I bought a tavern in Skid Row. And that was the beginning. Thank you very much. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Oh my God, what is a girl to do with such tits? Oh, I gotta take a little breath. Thank you very much. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Darcel 15 right here in Portland, Oregon. The choreography was done by Roxy, and I would create the costumes for the production numbers. We worked as a really tight team, but we were also very much in love. I met Roxy about a month before I told Jeanette that I'm a homosexual, I'm a gay man, I was tired of lying, and I wanted, I wanted, I wanted to live my life the way it was meant to be. I'm trying to find a picture of Roxy when he was on stage. Roxy and I were together for over 50 years until he died. He put the spark in our show that we needed. If there was an extra kick to make in a number, he would kick, do it. If there was an extra smile, he'd smile. If there was an extra bow at the audience, he would do it. He really put my first face on the first time I was ever in drag, and we went to the Hoyt Hotel, and the mirrored walls were around, and I walked up, through the mill, mirror, up to the mirrors and took a look and said, what in the world have I done? Didn't recognize who I was. A great love affair and a great companion and a great businessman. It's been an important, important part of my life. About eight months ago, Roxy and I went to New York. And they said, Darcel, Roxy, you're not going to Times Square. You're going to get ravished and mugged in Times Square. Seven days we stood in Times Square. <laughs> not a damn thing happened. It's a really goddamn good vacation. I'll tell you that right now. We, Yakima, where's my friends from Yakima? There. There was a time when we had 12 gay bars and they were like closets. That's where you went to meet people and uh, they didn't go out and run around on the streets. In those days, we got ready at the show place and didn't go outside. And when we went home, we put our Levi's back on with the washed face and off we go. Gay bashings were happening a lot then. People illiterates that thought that if they had a two by four, they could beat our car up as we drove along. I, that happened one time with me. I was in drag, we had a Carmen Ghia and a car of uh, high school, college, whatever, they had a two by four and they were gonna hit the car. I drove into the police station down at the basement of the garage. They didn't follow me. 30 years ago, the question was, are you gay? And Darcel would always say, I'm happy. Are you happy? Yes. Then I'm happy. There was no difference between whether we were gay, whether we were straight, what we were, and but we didn't come out and say that. Now, the era that we're in, the acceptance that we're in, the acceptance that Darcel's in, gay, straight, whatever, the question doesn't even come up anymore. There is no question, and I think that's what people are that are learning from coming here, it doesn't matter who you are or what you do, everybody's accepted and Darcel accepts everybody. Now, we don't have to go to a gay restaurant, a gay bar, we can go anywhere and are, are accepted. The change is, well, television, movies, uh, some of the best, funniest, the best shows are, have a drag queen in them. So, you know, it, it turned, and I did my share. If I was asked to do a charity, I did it. Uh, Lung Association, Heart Association, American Women, Business Women's Association, politicians, 
came to me to come to their fundraisers and they'd call Darcel and I'd go, I'd go and, and do whatever they wanted me to do. And I worked with Imperial Sovereign Rose Court of Portland, an organization that raised hundreds of thousands of dollars over the years for charities. We have female impersonators designed in the royal family, the, the empress, emperor, prince, princess, and down the line. I was crowned the 15th Empress of Portland. I was so happy that I was the 15th Empress, and that's where the 15 came from. And happiness was my slogan. And this was my Empress crown in 1973. We're, this, we're in our 60th year, so there's 60 Empresses that wear this very same crown. And it looks lovely with no hair, don't you think? <laughs> this is the precious one. Now, we do a contest in September. It's called Le Femme Magnifique, and this is their crown. When they win, they come from all over the United States to join our pageant. Le Femme Magnifique is a pageant to choose the most glamorous female impersonator in the world. It's not a beauty pageant, it's glamour. Glamour goes a lot deeper than physical beauty. Some portions of the admission go to charity. I have to give something back. It's my duty. I adore working with Darcel for many reasons. We've been very dear friends for almost all of my 30 years in drag, and she's become such a great mentor, a father figure, taught me so much about business, and not just so much about the drag persona, but the human aspect of it, just what we do, how much it means to other people that come to see our show. We are a piece of Portland's history, a piece of Portland's culture, and I just think that's so important that we all get to be a part of that. Her focus has always been about celebrating and supporting the community. She's my family, but most importantly, a friend and um, the whole club. I mean, we fight um, just like regular families do, uh, but at the end of the day, I know that if anything were to happen, we would have each other's backs. I was recently just hired on at Darcel 15. You walk in and you know that there is somebody of a legacy here. Well, howdy doody. And the, the community supports Darcel 15 10%. I have never been anywhere where they literally are just like, she is ours. I don't think I could ever count how much money I've helped raise over my career. Could you say a million dollars? I think you could. That's not a loan, ever. It's always, you, Darcel can't stand alone. It's the community, my friends that are female impersonators, the, the people who come and spend their money. Oh, it's, it's just a fantastic thing. Now we can also love who we want to love and marry who we love. Yeah! We've come a long way. Last Sunday we had Gay Pride Parade. 60,000 people came out to stand on the rock and turf. We've come a long way. Jesus freaks were there, of course. Last year they said, Darcel's demons are gonna burn in hell. This year, they said, Darcel, you're not gonna read to my children. And remember, let's keep what we have, register and vote. Vote, vote, vote. Don't give anything we've gained all these years away. Vote! Thank you, guys. In the 60s, anybody who was against us having any, a gay community having any rights, we call it special rights. Nobody asked for anything special. We wanted the same rights as everybody else had. In 1992, Measure 9, 
was on the ballot. It was a measure that uh, employers could fire us if they found out that we were queer. The housing would not be available to us if they found out we were queer. Many, many things we could be thrown out of grocery stores or wherever. Unfortunately, the epidemic of AIDS was rampant. Every week, there would be somebody die of AIDS complications. Our work at Imperial Sovereign Rose Court and Dar Cell 15 was directed to help our friends who were ill. Uh, we had to take all that money we raised and buy television ads to fight the horrible, horrible Measure 9, and we raised many, many thousands of dollars to fight that so that that would be defeated. By the way, it was defeated, and the only place it passed in Oregon is Springfield. We made enough noise over the years that we now have equal rights. We can work where we want to work, and now we have same-sex marriage, which is a step in, a big step in the direction of equalness in the world. My appearance at the auctions and all of that were very important to me to give back to the community. And it also opened up their eyes that, you know, I didn't have two heads and... <laughs> at our self Show showplace, we hope that you would walk in with an open mind and know that we're having a delightful time for them. And likewise, they should have a happy time with us. And it happens. Detroit. <laughs> oh, wow. You shut up. <laughs> you put the four <laughs> right on the runway. Damn right. <laughs> Drunk <laughs> mother. <laughs> and, and, yeah, thank you very much. I'm trying to talk to this person over here. So I, they don't get out much. I think that all entertainers start their lives out by being introverted until finally they find a niche and find something that makes it work click for them. I certainly did, and I said, this is it. I'm gonna step out and make a name for myself. And I've done it. I've made the right decisions along the way. Every drape, every light, everything in there is, is my creation. And thank heaven it worked. Everybody. Grandmas, grandpas, little kids, everybody screams my name. fills you up. I mean, you're ready to go do it all over again, another 50 years. What I hope that people know about Darcel, about Walter Cole, is that you have to maintain happiness in your life. If you're not happy with your family, with your friends, with your job, with where you live, move on. Be happy. Staying happy keeps you young. Find out who you are. Find out yourself who you are and what you want to do or be and stick with it. It'll work for you if you do that. <laughs>